Welcome to the DebConf in Debian Boff with Holger Lepsen, Gunnar Wolf, Stefano Zaccheroli, and Murray Allen. It's working. Is it on? Okay. So welcome everybody. Um, this BOF is essentially a debunking of last year BOF, which was called uh, DebConf versus Debian. And um, the question that we have, been, we have been trying to clarify in the past year or so is the relationship among DebConf and Debian. And I think among me and the DebConf team, we essentially reached the agreement that essentially DebConf is Debian. So DebConf exists because of Debian. And so this whole debate among being separate was just uh, a moot debate that we don't want to push forward anymore. So during the past year, we have been working on, uh, I think we have reached consensus on this point. So DebConf exists because of Debian. And we have been working, especially thanks to Moray, on setting sets of clarifying what are the main goals of this conference. So we, are, we have reached an agreement on the primary and secondary goals of the conference, which you can see on this slide. So the primary goals of DebConf, the main reason for DebConf to exist, is to enable face-to-face -face interactions among people who are working on Debian, among members of the Debian community, to provide, to provide talks and video for people who are working on Debian but cannot make it to Debian, and to provide time that we can use to work on Debian, um, shoulder uh, very near together, and essentially a, a mega sprint that we can have in uh, one week on DebCamp and also in the remaining time during DebConf. These are the main goal for existing of uh, DebConf, and the secondary goals are uh, essentially some sort of byproducts are to actually motivate contributors, and the, as you all know, if you have attended some DebConf, the enthusiasm at the end of the conference is something which is very important for Debian, and also to motivate the local community. So DebConf has a kind of a dual role for the Debian community and also to the local community where their conference is actually uh, run, and this essentially explains why we try to move DebConf around the world year after year. So. We have an agreement on this. We think this is the reason why DebConf exists. And having said that clear, we needed to essentially do some work to better integrate the, the infrastructure and the, the process of DebConf into those of Debian to avoid duplicating work, duplicating infrastructure, and essentially avoiding that we spend time on useless duplication and actually are more effective in both running Debian and running DebConf. So what has happened in the past year is that we have clarified the relationship among DebConf and Debian in the sense of that we have, we have essentially made a delegation, which is the only tool we have according to constitution to provide a formal relationship among the Debian project and something. And so we have, I have delegated Olger, Murray, and Gunnar as the DebConf chair, which are not the people who do all the work or the people who decide everything, but are the people who try to reach consensus with the DebConf team on how the conference is run. We've also worked a lot on the DebCon finances, deciding that DebCon budget is essentially as part of Debian budget. For uh, making it easier to handle money, we fork off essentially uh, a sub-budget of Debian at the first time we need to make an expense for a given DebCon. During the period that sub-budget exists, the chairs are responsible for approving expenses and this kind of stuff, so that I do not have to approve any single expense that is needed to run DebConf. Uh, and as soon as possible, after DebConf is over, we merge back the budget into Debian budget. So essentially the idea is that every year we have a tentative budget, we say DebConf is gonna cost this amount of money, that budget is ideally approved by me as the DPL, fork it off, and managed by the DebConf chair, and then merge it back as soon as possible. Uh, by discussion with the Deb Debian auditors, we will, all, we will also have soon some sort of auditing of the DebConf budget by the Debian auditors so that they will be able to monitor what is going on as well any other Debian initiative. And this is the part of the finance. Do you want to add something? Yeah, that, that the goal is to have a um, zero budget, zero oh, income loss, zero loss over the years. It's fine if DebConf does a loss one year, but on average it should zero out or give a little profit to Debian. Yeah, correct. So that's why if you've attended my talk on uh, Debian money, 
I have essentially stated that Debian overall is Debconf is overall not uh, something that Debian spend money on because it, on the average is amortized your cost. And even if we have only set this goal starting from this year, it is actually what has happened in the past. So if you look at the archives of the Debconf team, there is a very nice mail by Richard Das, which has done some uh, archaeology on Deb Debconf budget, is, and it has been exactly like this in the past. I don't remember three Debconf, I think. Um, and then we have already fixed various parts of the infrastructure overlap we used to have among Debconf and Debian. So the Debconf SVN repositories has been migrated to Alias. I don't remember when, but sometime last year. Debconf 5, okay, thanks. Uh, we have essentially merged the Debconf press team in the Debian press team because it was not clear uh, whether the Debconf press team was running or not, and so starting a few months ago, I guess, the, the press team of Debconf is the same press team of Debian. So this is all great, I think, but we still have some other aspect on which we want to work. And essentially, we have some infrastructure overlap which still exists. We have a separate wiki for Debconf. We have a separate list server for Debconf. We have uh, Debian, Debconf websites which are not uh, handled by DSA. We have a separate instance of the authentication based on UDLDAP. We have different set of system administrators for Debconf. And we also have some administrative stuff which is still separate. For instance, we have Debconf org domain which are not owned by SPI. We have hardware which is not owned by SPI. And we have a separate team which does fundraising for Debconf, while we probably want to have a general team, global team, which does fundraising for Debian as well. So by discussion at this conference, which um, we want to discuss with you and in the future on Debconf team, we have some, sort, some set of proposals and open issues. So for what, um, for what concerns Wiki Debian org, Wiki Debconf org, we think it should be merged in wiki Debian org on some sub pages slash debconf or something. And that would require a step of conversion because debconf wiki is media wiki while the Debian wiki is Moin. So there will need to be some conversion step, but then all the pages can be moved to uh, wiki Debian org. Um, the list server, the list which we now have on debconf can be moved to list Debian org, except that there is some discussion on short lived list, which is something that historically list master have had some issues with. So we need to talk with them before actually doing the move of all the lists. Um, we haven't discussed it yet explicitly, but I th we think that DebConf websites should be moved to some DSA administered machine and managed by the DebConf team by some, via some group. Um, UDLDAP is something that I think is still open for discussion. So there is a need for DebConf team to actually be able to create an uh, account during the conference on the fly, but that maybe can be managed by having some subtree in UDLDAP, which is managed by um, DebConf team. And we have right now another system administration, the situation is not terribly clear. I think you know more about that than me. But the idea is to, to start with enlarging the current team so that it's clear that the team is uh, an expression of the DebConf team. And then there are some other issues, like uh, DebConf org, we agreed that should be moved to SPI, the domain. We haven't yet discussed hardware ownership, and we haven't yet discussed also the idea of merging the Debian fundraising team into uh, actually converting it into a general Deb Debian fundraising team. Um, Andrew? What's the rationalization behind the uh, need to merge? What is the reason behind wanting to merge the DebConf wiki with the Debian wiki? Well, in most of these parts, the reason is that we don't want to be, uh, have the burden of maintaining two separate services when, where we can maintain only one. The content is quite, quite different to the content of the uh, DebConf. Uh, um, for me, for me, it's mostly, mostly and for, foremost, um, having the same um, wiki syntax. Whether we have two wiki instances or one is rather not the important part for me. Again, it would reduce the problem a lot if the wiki maintainers would. If wait, I, I haven't asked them, and I don't know whether they would be willing. If they would volunteer to maintain a DebConf wiki on the same machine using the same system, that would basically. Um, also fix the problem. It's, again, it's a, it's a long, it's, none of these really, from my point of view, are short-term problems at all. It's more from my point of view, it seems not that sensible to be creating a long-term maintenance burden for each of these systems where we're, we're requiring different admins, different people. And again, things like we have different, we end up creating separate solutions to wiki spam, for example, in case of a wiki. 
So uh, before, before we, we, we jump into the discussion, I have already finished essentially. I just wanted to mention that. So the part with the question marks are part in which there are still some discussion to be made. The parts without the question mark is stuff that is going to happen, but it will happen, it will happen sooner if you help. For instance, the conversion of the wiki needs someone doing the work. And uh, what we would like to discuss with you in this uh, buff is essentially, uh, well, if you have a take on, this, on the issue that still needs to be, to be discussed, uh, we would like to hear uh, your opinion. But in particular, also, if there is other stuff that needs to be clarified and fixed with respect to the relationship among Debian and DebConf. Those are also not really hard requirements, but things we see which are doubled, where work is doubled. If, it's reason, if there are reasons for the double work, and if it's going well, it doesn't have to happen right now. There's things, there's lots of duplicate work in Debian which has reasons. So, go ahead, Andreas. Yeah. So, first of all, I would like, really like to thank you for doing that because I really think in the middle to long term, we, we would just waste lots of time for doubling solutions. Um, so, that's, I think, is a good thing to do um, for Debian as a whole. Um, I know, as Holger said, there might be places left where we say, yes, we duplicate the work because it's less effort than to do it some other way. Then it's, of course, a well-spent effort. But in other cases, I just don't think we should double the work just because there's step confident Debian. And so, yes, congratulations to that step. Thanks. Uh, I just wanted to mention that I spoke with Pabs at lunch, and he seems happy to work on the wiki conversion and merge. Um, I'm sure he would appreciate other people working with him, but yeah, that does sound like something that he's up for working on. He's at the games boff right now. Thanks, Pabs. Pabs for DPL. <laughs> so about the websites, you're um, mentioning moving them to DSA. But this is not the important point about the websites. The important thing is the web thing. And you haven't said what you're going to do with it. If you're going to move it to the Debian webmasters team or... Person, personally, I think the DSA is wrong. There should be the web team. Mm -hmm. It is open issues, to-do list, things we are thinking about. Something I wanted to say really to the website too is that I, I think it's great, this kind of idea of merging stuff with Debian, but what I'm worried about is that uh, you, usually in DevCom so far, there's many things that are a little more ad hoc, uh, or there is people working that are not yet part of Debian proper. Uh, so <clears throat> I wonder if uh, this will not be an impediment for them to continue participating. For the, all the websites are already, we have a new website every year, as you notice. All these websites are already work, managed through SVN, um, mm -hmm. which is on Alios. So, the people doing the website work have no need at all to be logging into the machines to fiddle around with stuff unless something's broken when the admin should fix it. Yeah, in any case, well, regarding what you say, uh, who needs an account? Uh, well, we have some infrastructure that, uh, well, besides the wiki, for example, the interface to the lists. It, it, it was different due to the personal preference of, of the person who set up the lists at some point, and it, it will need some uh, uh, fixing, and well, we don't want to lose the links we have currently, but uh, uh, yeah, no, few people really require to have uh, accounts on our machines. So. Maybe there is a question there. Uh, you didn't mention Penta in your list. Is that just you forgot about it, or...? Good point. I didn't mention it because we didn't discuss it. <laughs> Penta is... It's a good point, definitely. Penta is such a huge So the pain. question is, uh, you didn't mention Penta, which is the conference management system. Go ahead. Uh, we need somebody to maintain Penta to fix the bug to make it better usable or to set up something else. And setting up something else is very easy set and quite a lot of work. But I think it should be to the list that mm -hmm. Penta maintenance is suboptimal to say at least. Yes, the, the problem with Penta is that, well, few people have uh, access to it because it's very hard to set up. So, uh, I mean, I, I don't have it in my laptop. I, I have it on 
a couple of uh, live servers uh, following the, the instructions of the gentleman who just raised his hand. Uh, it's quite hard to set up. It's quite hard to understand. Once you understand it, yeah, many people can hack on it. And it's uh, worth having more people in, in the group uh, of uh, possible hackers. The thing is, few people are able to work with it, but we don't have anything better. We don't have, we don't have anything that remotely uh, gets us close in, in functionality to, uh, to what we need. Again, on the other hand, Penta is quite over what we require. So it, it, it introduces, for example, to, to approve a talk, I must click on five separate things in separate screens. Uh, so well, th there are problems. If you have any better suggestion, please come, uh, come and uh, we, we should discuss it, but uh, well. Freedom. So this is not something that you decide, but um, in the spirit of that DevConf and Debian are close to each other and basically Debian, um, I'd really like to see DevConf members who are not Debian developers, like uh, maybe Richard Darst or other people that are involved a lot in DevConf, to actually welcome them in Debian and uh, have them perhaps as delegates for some things like... So they are welcome in Debian, yeah. but we, you know, we cannot force them we, we've to tried, join. We've tried Fair this enough. quite hard with Richard. He, he's not so keen. But. Yeah. I was just going to say that it looks like, just a quick overview, having worked on both teams over the years now, the only thing that's going to be difficult is the user management. Um, UDLDAP just isn't up to the task right now, although working on that in the next year is something on my plate already. So we can try to add in ACLs to allow people to add users of certain types and things like that. We'll just need to think about it. And as always, guys, patches. <laughs> um, I would really like to have a comment from you, Jörg, but said they're not. And, but uh, and the other thing is, are there other, other issues you see with StepConf, or is all going fine except these things? So can I, can I just um, raise one more point about Penta, um, which is that while we currently don't have anything better, we are also currently uh, on a heavily divergent fork from upstream. We are not contributing our changes back, and we have no Debian package for Penta. So, uh, just on the issue of sort of dog food or whatever, we need to. It would, if someone wants to step up and try to fix those problems, it would be a really good thing. Daniel, the problem with that is that, uh, well, uh, this is the third uh, conference management system I have tried to make completely generic. And I think making a generic, complex uh, conference management system is a fail from the beginning. This is a DevConf management system. It's been heavily altered to suit the needs of DevConf. Most of the changes we have made are not useful for upstream because, well, we even introduced a, tail, uh, a namespace called DevConf, and, well, it introduced a whole layer of complexity because everything must be checked on the regular tables and on the DevConf tables. So, yeah, I think the, maybe uh, others will disagree, but I think the fork is irreversible and the uh, and the, the, the flow that our conference follows is completely different from anything else. I, while I, that is true, I agree with what Daniel said. We should be proper upstream then and mm -hmm. publish our code in a repository. We have it on a Git repository, I think, and to create Debian packages. Also, the, the, the original upstream is kind of missing an action. Mm -hmm. So, But if we do, if we decide we become our own, our own upstreams, Maybe we should also try to simplify Penta to remove all the craft we don't use. Any let's, takers? Let's make it Denta barf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think before everyone piles on to the idea of making, being, becoming an upstream of Denta Darf or whatever, Denta Darst or <laughs> what, <laughs> whatever it's going to be, uh, I think uh, what, what Gunnar is saying I think is wise, but I think the Debian-specific changes to Penta are one thing that can be separated into a patch set, like we do in Debian packages that get applied. <laughs> and then the other things that are actual bug fixes that we do to Penta 
can be pushed upstream, which we're not doing, and we can also receive upstream fixes from the upstream vented development, which we're not able to do because all of our code is just jammed all together into a big spaghetti mess. Uh, so there are ways to actually separate out our specific needs for our specific conference and then apply them to what is upstream. But that requires managing our changes and merging the upstream changes into that, which is, in my opinion, less work than becoming upstream of an entire source code project, which is really quite a lot of work if it's going to be done properly. I have looked. It's, <laughs> it's frightening, yeah. So I, but I think that is, if, if you want to help DebConf and not, are not involved yet, hacking on Tentar and maintaining it could really be a very, very, very good way. And it's good for an outsider to get started. We have a test instance set up, and it's not that hard to set up. I mean, another thing, pe people often look, again, they start talking about Pentar, then they look at the Pentar code and run away a bit. Um, there's, some, there's been su suggestions of, of course, people of replacing it entirely. I mean, one thing that could be done in principle, which would solve, wouldn't solve our overall problem, but would help some of the attendees who fail every year to register correctly due to the Pentra Barf UI, it might be possible to make a, um, if, if, if there's a volunteer in the room, it might be possible to make a simple registration UI, which has not got all the let's do, move things around the, sc the screen and hide them with JavaScript and so on, and just lets you register. Um, but I'm certainly not volunteering to do that myself. Also, an another important thing to keep in mind with Penta is that we don't want to break all the information we currently have. I mean, our past conferences uh, and all of the information in, in it are still, since uh, Edinburgh, are still uh, backed up in Penta, and we don't want to lose that. Um, yeah, so uh, while upstream of Penta above might be uh, missing in action, to the best of my knowledge, uh, it's still used by the uh, Chaos Communication Club, and they will have a big camp in two weeks from now. So uh, clearly publishing bug fixes, I think, would be appreciated by them also. And while you say the, the fork itself is ir irre irreversible, I think... Uh, there might still be room for uh, flow, um, bug fixes flowing two ways, both ways. But the CCC is also looking for a maintainer for Penta. So. Everyone who wants to work on Penta above can just check out our code. We are having a Git tree for it. Yeah. And mainly since one time upgrading after DC7, we are trying to have our our own data that we are using for DebConf in an own database area. Yeah. So, and we are having a lot of SQL files actually setting up that extra area. So there is already lots of split up. Where we are not very good in splitting it up is actually in the RXML files which are producing the websites later on. In there, it's pretty hard to actually get out the patches and stuff. But whoever volunteers, just talk to me. We have the Git stuff for it public, so have fun. Anything else? Shall we do DebConf twice a year? <laughs> or other suggestions <laughs> about DebConf and Debian? Uh, what? One other point, since most of the people in this room, presumably, if they didn't get the wrong room, are interested in um, how DebConf runs in Debian, not all of the people in this room are yet members of the DebConf team. Um, we are looking still for more volunteers to do things. This doesn't need to be a big job. It can just be you pick one thing that takes a couple of days once a year to do, for example, like someone, Anna, for example, has been doing room allocation, but trying to not have her life taken over by DevConf the rest of the time. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we're also looking, I mean, at any of the different levels or different areas, um, because we've, we've kind of had a, like, over the last few years, we've actually had the, the same few people doing a lot of the kind of core work and 
obviously there's always some rate of attrition, so it would be nice to get a few more people in as for, as for every other team in Debian, of course. So yeah, if you're interested, then uh, it's unfortunately the normal Debian approach, just start doing work and it works that way. <laughs> I think it, by the way, it's a very interesting way, I think, of contributing to Debian without doing uh, packaging or this kind of stuff. And can be, I th my, I'm not myself a member of the DebConf team, shame on me, <laughs> but I, as far as I can see, it can be very rewarding, actually. Even if you do a, a small job once per year, it can be very rewarding. Yeah, and as, despite my comment about just doing work, we are an area where it's easy to pop up in the list and say, I want to help with something, and we'll generally have 10 easy tasks that will take not, the, not very long each to do ready. Mm -hmm. I think this, uh, well, the, the last uh, uh, three years, including this one and the next year, uh, the, the, the main people in, in the local teams have not been Debian developers. So, uh, well, th this is a, a very obvious thing. We, we can also consider, well, promoting this uh, as a, maybe a, a way to get uh, non-uploading non Debian developers as uh, one of the tasks. Uh, since Holger asked for two DebComs a year, uh, um, I had the idea. Um, it may be worth uh, thought uh, if the DebConf infrastructure could be made available to teams that make mini DebConfs. Mm -hmm. I can it, is a, it is available. Yeah. That's the short answer. <coughs> Everyone doing a Debian conference, no matter how many days it is, or if it's even one day only, they can have whatever resources they are needing. They can go to the wiki, to the list, they can have a website, they can have whatever kind of mail alias, whatever we are offering. And if it's large enough, it's enough people, we can even do Pentabuff stuff. In that case, we want help from you with Pentabuff anyways, but you can have whatever DebConf offers, basically. Just talk to us. We are having, we had the Panama Miniconf of, I think, last year it was, or the year before. We had India Minicon for 2010, and for 2011, they also asked again. They mainly have lists, but they are planning to use Pentabuff in the future, so we might get more people there this time. But everyone who is doing, running a Minicon, just come to us and talk. The same is also true for the new video equipment, which we can maybe chip to the locations. We need to see with Eril, who is partly owning the hardware, but it is possible to ask and if it's possible from Eero, we can send the stuff to other mini, other mini Debcoms. And you can have free streaming included because we keep the streaming set up running the whole year. Okay. You just need to talk to us. <laughs> yeah. Mini Debcoms in Paris easily get the equipment, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> we just changed the room of the equipment. It's not a big deal. <laughs> There's nothing else to discuss, or no other suggestions, complaints. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>